Hey everybody, I just thought it'd be interesting to do a quick comparison of the difficulty settings in System Shock, uh, the original version. Um, I'm just doing this in DOSBox real quick because it's the same version of the game uh, as we're playing on an actual native DOS PC in the playthrough. So let's start off with combat. Um, on the normal difficulty setting of two, enemies take a uh, you know, reasonable amount of damage, uh, they're moderately aggressive, and they do you know, a moderate amount of damage. There's not really too much to say about this. If we bump the difficulty down to zero, enemies pretty much just stand around or wander around and take one hit to kill. At least these earlier enemies, they don't really seem to take any interest or notice of you. Uh, as it says, they won't attack first in the difficulty setting. If we set the difficulty to one, enemies will attack us again, uh, but they're still fairly easy to kill compared to uh, setting to the normal setting. And finally, if we go to difficulty setting three, uh, anecdotally, it seems like enemies are maybe a little bit faster, uh, more aggressive, maybe they attack a little bit faster. I'm not sure if they do more damage or not, uh, but it does seem like maybe they take uh, more hits sometimes. Uh, so yeah, that's the gist of the combat. Let's move on. Checking out plot now, if we leave it on two, you can see that we need to push a button to open a door in this very first room. And if we listen to this message, it's fairly wordy in the text if we have the text turned on. If we set plot to zero, it says it just removes the plot. And uh, yep, <laughs> that's exactly what happens. We no longer even need to push a button to open this first door. We can just open it and the uh, the message item is it's just gone. If we set the plot to one, we have to use the button again and our message item is is back or log is back. Uh, however, if you have the text turned on, you can see that uh, it's a bit different. It's, it's a bit less wordy and a little bit more straight to the point, even though the speech isn't. Plus, you can see the key card to open the next door is missing as it was in level zero. Finally, if we set the plot to 3, uh, it's basically, I believe, the same as 2, except it adds a 7 hour time limit to the entire game, so probably not recommended for a first playthrough. Alright, moving on to puzzles. If we leave it on 2, you can see in this very first puzzle to activate the elevator. Uh, you know, it's fairly easy. Um, it's an early puzzle, so there are harder ones later on. But it's not, you know, completely trivial. However, if we set puzzles to zero and then go back and try to do this same elevator puzzle, it's automatically completed for us. If we come in and set puzzles to one, then at the same elevator puzzle, you can see there are a few more tiles that we can work with uh, that just make our life a little bit easier. Finally, if we set puzzles to three and do the elevator puzzle, you can see a new type of node that we have to activate where we have to get the energy source essentially to get to both sides of it before it will activate. Um, so it's just a little bit more complicated than the uh, level two puzzle. Now this is a very early puzzle and it says that it affects most puzzles. So, uh, you know, your mileage may vary depending on at what point you are in the game. Finally, let's check out Cyberspace. This was a little bit trickier, but if we set Cyberspace to two, you can see that we are constantly moving forward and uh, enemies can come after us, they can damage us. And also that we have, uh, I believe, a five minute time limit once we are in Cyberspace before we get ejected. If we go ahead and set Cyberspace to zero, you can see that we actually stop moving forward, which uh, makes a really big difference, I would say, in the overall difficulty of navigating cyberspace. On top of that, enemies don't seem to be able to damage us at all, uh, and neither can the, the mines that are floating around, as far as I can tell. Uh, and then also we've got just an absolutely massive amount of time to kind of explore and do whatever we want. If we set cyberspace to one, you can see that uh, we still don't move forward automatically, which is nice. And we've got a good amount of time but not a, a huge amount of time necessarily to explore. 
Uh, on top of that, enemies can uh, damage us again, so that's something to watch out for. Though I'm not sure if it's less damage or the same as um, difficulty setting 2. And finally, if we set cyberspace to 3, things get really tricky. So we start moving forward again automatically. I'm not sure if we're moving maybe a little bit faster than 2. Uh, hard to tell. Uh, maybe you can see in the footage, but uh, on top of that, our time limit is drastically reduced to the point where you may have some difficulties uh, completing certain objectives within said time limit. Enemies uh, can damage us again. It seems like maybe they do a little bit more damage. So yeah, I, uh, I think this is probably a tough setting. And that's it. Just a quick little video, like I said, to compare some of the difficulty settings since you have to choose these at the beginning of the game, as far as I know, you can't change them in the middle of it. So maybe this will help you decide how you want to play System Shock, if it's something that you're thinking about doing. All right, that's it. I'll see you next time.